Let's get going. Opponent is playing Zorzim for three charges. Creates two spiderling eggs. It puts them into our deck. It's in like, is it exciting? But it's fine. It's got outlaw. If you have a turn two play, usually you could keep. I guess we don't have an elf for this, but like we have, we have other things to do before we need to play that resource, so. <laughs> They're playing a mill deck. Acrotic Badness buries the top four cards of our deck, and their next Acrotic Badness will bury eight then. We need to be aggressive here. Yeah, they're pretty good. I think. I think Pack Mule might actually be the best the best card in there. Yeah, opponent's bronze for standard constructed. The immortal queue's unranked, so there's no pairing based on based on ranking. Well that makes that makes our rates of salt much worse. Maybe I'm just supposed to mulligan the sand. So boring father, we get to pay two and pass. <laughs> yep. All right. Well, you know, ramp deck problems. Hopefully they attack with Exarch of the Egg. And don't have a follow up. Jake bot deck sweet technology, right? Play this and ship. When I'm currently having the opposite problem of us, they're a little bit, uh, a little bit shard light. I'm gonna go ahead and transform this, and then hit it with my champion power here, so we can power through. This guy deals damage equal to his power to one of my opponent's troops when it attacks for the first time. So if we champ power this, it's gonna hit my opponent for five, and this for five, and then if it goes unblocked, don't cheap shot me. God bless. With that one. So my opponent's taking 4 14 here. The being aggressive plan appears to be working out, especially with them stumbling a little bit here. Attackers. This can flip into a Scarlet Swordsman and be a little bit more powerful as well. And play Troop out. Alright, so my opponent's dead on board. Even if they hit a spider here, the Scarlet out oh, Scarlet Swordsman is gonna kill them. For reserving. Pyre Strike probably isn't the worst. As good as these were in that game, I don't think Righteous Outlaw is probably going to be particularly good in this matchup. I'm supposed to leave a couple. Maybe they're fine. I'm just supposed to trim my more expensive cards here. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Trim these a little bit so that way we can. Uh, eh, I'm going to leave all four Surging Wildfires because Wildfires, the nuts. Turn 
Return to Runear Hierophant. Sign me up. Uh, this hand actually doesn't have an elf in it again, so this doesn't... We're a little light on the elf count in this deck for sure. We only have 12, and I've boarded down to 11 here, so... Definitely going to be a number of games where we're missing the elf requirement for Feral Acorn to do anything. Just the old chronic bad disus said what again? Milling over three resources and an elf. Hopefully we didn't hit, hit an elf or we'll be by turn three so that way we can curve this into this. Sweet, we're gonna need to ready with this. Hopefully they don't have Dingle or anything like that. We hit the Ruby because we're a professional. And then we're gonna get to, if the Spell Shield Runeer into Surging Wildfire is enough, we're gonna get to play Titania's Majesty on four. This card looks at the top five cards of our deck. We get to take one of the troops in there and put it into play with the powers of this. In this case, it'll, it'll gain double damage, which makes Surging Wildfire with double damage quite nasty. Bright of the damned, yep. That's pretty good. So... I'm gonna play this outlaw, and I'm gonna attack with both of these. If my opponent wants to eat my outlaw with their bride, then they can't trade with the Runeer Hierophant, then I'll get a Rhino, which I think is an okay exchange for me. Yeah, they just want to trade there, which I'm okay with that. And we're supposed to attack with this too. It's probably a free point to get in with that. Yeah, I think I missed a point of damage basically here. Getting the bride off the table is pretty important though. Cards. Still no spider eggs. I'll make a Valor for now. Oh. I guess if I would have flipped it, I could have used this to. Yeah, okay, that was wrong. If I would have flipped this, I could have used my champion power to kill the Tribunal Magistrate. I wasn't thinking about that. Right, that's not exciting. See, that was a mistake on my part. Although I guess having the Valor means I can heart double Valor and shoot some stuff down next turn. I'm sure I sent these upstairs actually. Nah, I'm just gonna kill this. This means the Scarlet Swordsman can't trigger, but I think that's fine. Making this more appealing to kill is probably bad since I have a second one in my hand. Hopefully, we don't get extinctioned here. Well, I guess if we do the Surging Wildfire, it's lethal as a follow up. I didn't want to risk him being able to kill the swordsman, but maybe that's too conservative. At any rate, we're just going to do this into this and then kill them. 
This will turn this into a four power attacker, and then when it attacks, it becomes a five power attacker, deals five damage to my opponent directly. Rar. Weeby Surgeon, Yaman. Get him for the lethals. All right, four more Hex Primal Immortal tickets to go. Everyone's having a good Thursday afternoon. We're hanging out, playing some Hex TCG 2-1 to Draft Pod, playing some Immortal. Hex Primal Immortal Championship is next weekend. I talked to Corey to add the Immortal Gauntlet. I haven't sent them a message directly, but they read they read the form, so I'm assuming I'm assuming they saw the thread I created that a bunch of people a bunch of people liked. Oh man, draft is at 7 of 8. No, we need immortal tickets. We're going to play immortal. If anyone wants to help me pop up immortal, feel free to join the queue. <laughs> Say I'll play Hearthstone if they don't. We see the things. There's Dino. I They, they read the stuff. going on carbon dragon do it do it for the fans immortal ooh we got a victim distant south playing madam banana i'd love to go first madam banana is usually the um the combo -y the combo -y deck. Uh, what's the combo deck? Um, hideous conversion combo deck. Lead on this. They don't have a one. Righteous Outlaw is pretty bad in this matchup because they have a lot of a lot of crappy X ones. But hopefully they don't have Spirit Bounce Spy on one, and then we can attack with this. They always have Spirit Bounce Spy on one. Never not Spirit Bounce Spy. <laughs> okay, Majesty's a good hit. Um, yeah, I think I'm just going Lyth into Righteous Outlaw and then passing the turn here. Hopefully they don't kill us, so... So this, whenever it dies, it makes a phantom now. And when it dies, it comes back into play as a phantom. So when this dies, they're going to get two phantoms. All right. Where's my root daddy at? Where's my root daddy at? Well, um, huh. There's Barut Father. He's got speed, and when he comes into play, he gives one of my other troops plus power equal to his power until end of turn. I would love to champ power this. So now this is 22 with Crush coming across. I'm pretty sure they have to block enough on these here that I should just attack with the Lyris too. Oh, it can't. I, I genuinely didn't know that he could target himself. 
That's, yeah, should have just targeted himself. I was thinking I wanted to be able to force this. I think they're dead anyways, because they have to, like, block here. And then they might be able to survive a little bit. How close are they? I haven't actually done the math. They would have certainly died if I'd have put in the plus eight. And here, this would be 19. And we... Okay, so I messed up. We could actually die here on their, on their untap. We could certainly die on their turn here. If they have hideous conversion in the other stuff. So yeah, so this could target itself. I think that's actually the first time I flipped out Root Father on the Majesty. <laughs> Alright, so, um... Burn's pretty good in this matchup, and Nietzsche's Reigns is fine in this matchup. Heart of Embers is not particularly good. Crocosword's like okay against their fair backup plan, but otherwise it's fairly mediocre. So I think that's how I want to board. These let us interact with their combo if their draw is kind of particularly fast. You can burn the thing they're targeting with their champion power in response. Pretty easy mulligan. Only one resource. That's a well at that. The only one resource hand you keep in this deck involve hauling brave and a wild shard. Put it mulliganing to five. Alrighty. We'll see how low we're going to go. Alright. Packs it in. Pack it up. Pack it in. Let me begin. Wildfire Majesty, Wildfire Majesty. It's like we're back to the Zorzum opponent that we played previously. I don't usually touch anything political on stream, but I would like to comment on something that I find is particularly hilarious because it affects both parties, I assume. Um, there's, there's, some, there, there's a group of people suing or something. They're filing lawsuits against Trump and these other senators that have, like, blocked their constituents on Twitter. And it's just like, like, this is a real news story in 2017. Like... My elected official has blocked me on Twitter, and I feel like this is this is against the Constitution. It's just like, holy crap. Do people not, not understand how technology works? Like, for one, if someone has you blocked on Twitter, you can still look at their stuff. Just, like, don't log into Twitter and go to their timeline. <laughs> oh, lordy. Is my opponent AFK? They appear, they appear to be AFK. That would be unfortunate. Come back, opponent. So meta in Eternal is basically Mattias, Hideous Conversion. No, I don't think so. The the first two, we've, so we've had two larger, um, we've had two larger tournaments for Immortal so far, and um, neither of them were overrun by these races. In fact, the Majesty decks haven't been putting up a lot of results at all. Um, which I think this version of Majesty is actually very good because a lot of the Majesty versions that people have been like trying and experimenting with so far in Immortal are like much clunkier versions. Someone mentioned earlier that Titanius Majesty to Walking Calamity is just GG, and while that's true most of the time, like Walking, Walking, our Titanius Majesty and Walking Calamity, like putting the card Walking Calamity in your deck has a very real cost to it. Like there's going to be multiple games where like you're drawing these ten drops and you're just like not able to play them out, and they just like clunk up your hand.
like I I think this version of Majesty that I'm playing is actually very good because it's very it's very reasonably consistent because like when you're drawing the cards we like we have a bunch of cards that we don't mind Majestying into. I don't mind Majestying into Croc. I don't mind Majestying into Surging Wildfire or Runeer or Righteous Outlaw. The argument is that Twitter for a public official beta account should be considered a public sector. It's like if you are disturbing the peace, but Senator tells you to stop talking in public, it could be considered illegal. But that's not what they're doing, right? Like, it's basically like, like if these people, they're blocking people on Twitter, it's probably because that person was harassing them. It's just like, in my opinion, it would be like if someone was like harassing me in public and I walked away with them and st walked away from them and started ignoring them. And for one, the other part of it is like blocking someone on Twitter doesn't actually prevent them from being able to read your stuff. Like, you could still see what the senator has posted, and making a new Twitter account is free. So if, like, someone's blocked you and you really needed to tag them on this 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 media form, like, you could create a new account for free at no cost to you, and, like, still interact with them. Uh, I would prefer if this was a wild shard, but this hand's very reasonable. Runeer Hierophant, we do have to remember our opponent does have Exarch of the Eggs and Extinctions in their deck if this is the same player we played before, so less good against the blood opponents than it is against people that have access to other removal spells. Man, milled over two wild shards, would have loved to draw on one. JK, still got there. Yep, Exarch of the Egg. Again, very good against, very good against Runeer Hierophant here. Because Runeer Hierophant can't be interacted with via traditional removal since it's got Spell Shield, but this is a troop that has lethal, so they can just block it and then, and then eat it up. don't like adulting when I'm not at work. <laughs> right, I think, since, especially since you're a third rooter here, we're just gonna, like, play this. And I'm just gonna go ahead and offer this trade here. Because we're gonna have to attack through this at some point anyways, right? Might as well be now. The fact that Fentio is gonna get to activate here and start putting ranch legs in our deck is kind of scary. We need to, we need to. Kill, oh, geez, this builds us cards too. That's really kind of scary. All right, Heart of Embers. That's great. Um, yeah, ten out of ten. Just playing this and then playing Heart of Embers, and then shooting this down before it starts milling us. And then my Runeer gets to connect here, which is also good because then. Oh, you know what? I technically messed this up. Don't strangle me. Don't strangle me. Oh, good. They could have strangled me in response there, and then I wouldn't have gotten the Heart of Embers trigger. Should have been bad for me. Should have made made a resource with this Howling Braid before playing the Heart of Embers out. If they put six more eggs in our deck and then have, like, another Chronic Badness here, we, they could potentially hit multiple Tarantula eggs, milling eight cards, so... goal here is to get this next rune here going before we hit too many tarantulas. Well, we tried fam. Alright, well, let's do this. 
and I'm valuing getting a Might Singer trigger here over making this one bigger, which might be a mistake. So when these come into play in addition to make a 5-5, they get to destroy target opposing troops, so kind of scary. Yeah, maybe I'm supposed to prioritize getting this larger as opposed to as opposed to getting one trigger off of this. No blocks. Our Majesties are actually pretty bad in this matchup, right? Because, like, all the eggs they put into our deck make it make it less likely that we hit. Uh, tarantula eggs make these 5-5. Five five. Spiderling eggs make a 1-1 one one that's unblockable. So, F Fentio is actually the only card in PvP that makes tarantula eggs. Everything else is just spider eggs. I'm just going to pressure as much as possible here. We're not playing around another extinction. We just need to kill them with this Runeer ASAP. Oh, did he not realize this had... They must not have realized this had Crush. Or they just wanted to preserve their life total that badly. Might Singers... Really want to draw a troop here. Another shot at a troop. Pretty unlikely that we hit since there's so many spiders in our deck, though. Unfortunate. Um, this is going to grow to a 7 7 deck turn at least. Since we have 5. That's annoying. That's lethal. That was a perfect draw. So we get to play this out and it has speed. And then when it comes to play, it gives something plus power equal to its power. So we'll give the thing with crush plus power equal to its power. Boom goes the Aborian Dynamite. Even if they go block block here, they still die to these other two. All right, so I actually think we're going to cut the Titanius Majesties. We're going to bring in the Pyre Strikes and the extra Borean Root Father. So we can have a little bit more live top decks. Speed and plus power. Um, bring in these two Repost, take their removal and turn it back on them. I think that's fine. Majesty gets pretty bad pretty quickly when our deck is filling up with eggs. Sand's plenty reasonable. It's got turn. It's got a turn three surging wildfire if we don't get disrupted. Well, hopefully our turn three surging wildfire doesn't get met by a hero fall since we drew a second. Circuit of the egg. Let's just get a blocking surging wildfire. Get a block of most of our stuff, really, let's be honest. Hopefully we can dodge Fentheo next turn. If they have a Fentheo next turn, we probably have to burn this pyre strike on the Fentheo as opposed to the Exarch of the Egg. Sure. A 
It's got the Alter Art, Exarch of the Eggs, and Vampire Princess. A lot of sweet swag. Um, yeah, 10 out of 10, just going to go ahead and Pyre Strike this. I need to do that before I can attack with these anyways, so I might as well do that this turn. And then I can get a crack in with my Life Lyrist. They probably want to keep that print, so this is just a free point of damage. Then toss malice, that's pretty good. Yep, deck's kinda going to work here. Wild Shard's actually a pretty good drop because it lets us play this Surging Wildfire Enchant Power It. So my opponent's gonna be able to trade their Exarch of the Egg with this, but I'm gonna get it through a large chunk of damage to do it while doing that. Actually, I'm gonna attack with the, do I wanna attack with the life here? Yeah, I think so. I think they need to kill the Surgic Wildfire. And if they don't block the Surgic Wildfire, um, we could just like play another one and then just keep smashing next turn. So again, it's just a free point of damage because they're trading with that regardless. So every time they play a Chronic Badness, they build over four more cards. <laughs> so we're at four, this is five, this is six resources. We're getting pretty close to just casting these Borean Roof Fathers. That's the seventh. It's another reason these Life Lyrists are good as opposed to something like Chlorophilia, because like they kill the Surging Wildfire next turn. I'm gonna be able to use my Borean Father and put his trigger on this so we can get in. If you go to draw a card when there's not a card in your deck, you lose the game. See if they've got extinction or some kind of removal here. Extinction is actually pretty good for us because we'll get to play a boring father and crack them for. S oh no! Wait, I'm a liar. Extinction beads. We wouldn't have the resource from this. All right, wildfire down. Please attack with both. Deal. No spiders. No spiders. All right, if we could dodge spiders, this a do spider at our draw step here, we'll be able to. Yep. If we dodge spiders, they're dead. Ding! Fries are done, so we play this. We play big boy Speedy Papa. I think this deck might be great, Kent. Casual extra 16 here. It's better than great. I don't know about better than great. It's definitely got some consistency behind it. I forget how far off I am of Futures List at this point. I think he was in the Ruby Cup. Stoned Viper with the 313 subscription. A quarter of a year. Welcome back. Thank you for the continued support. I really, really do appreciate it. You are, my subscribers are the reason I'm able to continue producing the content that I do, so welcome back. Yeah, I think, I think the Lyricist is a big upgrade, honestly, over the Chlorophilia. Like, like, he was playing three Feral Root Acorn with only eight elves, which is really greedy, and like, we're able to play four Feral Root Acorns pretty consistently. The, the Righteous Outlaws are big, big game too, like we're playing a full four on those as well. By taking some of the top end and trimming it down.
I mean, like, Lyris has really shown in a few of these last two, uh, last couple games. <laughs> oh, should we, should we, should I, should I age? Should I age my Surging Wildfires? How many Surging Wildfires have I drafted? This is a good question. Fifteen. Fifteen surging wildfires. Do I think Lorenzo could be played at all? Maybe. I guess that doubles up our champ power. It's another elf, too. Anyone want to play a game or two of Immortal? I need two more Hex Primal tickets. Nineteen. Good call. Good call. Well, I can't. I can't get rid of those extra four. So I have fifteen. I can get rid of. Fine, fine, fine. <laughs> 